Hello and welcome to the first in a new tutorial series on learning to program using Scratch. Uh, my name is Justin Arnold and you're either watching this on my YouTube channel The Tech Train or possibly on my new website computerscience.click. In either case, you'll be able to go through a whole series of lessons step by step, learning all the basics of how to write computer programs using nothing more complicated than Scratch. Now, I'm assuming for this that you have never coded before. If you have, that will help. But if you haven't, this will be a really good starting point for you. Scratch is a really friendly, easy to get started with tool for programming, but it's surprisingly powerful. There's a lot that you can do with Scratch um, and a lot that you can learn about programming using this set of tools. So how do we get started then? Let's have a little look at uh, the first step, stepping point for you. Uh, so to begin with, we need to go online and look for Scratch. So if you go to Google and search Scratch, you'll find that the very first uh, result which appears here is the one that you're looking for. And this will take you through to this website. And as I say, Scratch is completely free, but I do recommend that one of the first things you do is sign up for an account. So you see that I've already signed up here at the top and I've signed in. Uh, if you do sign in, then you'll be able to have all of your programs, all of your work saved online, which means you can go to any computer, sign into Scratch, and there will be all your games, all your programs, and you won't lose anything, which is of course a real bonus. So once you've joined up uh, on Scratch and you've signed in, head over on the left-hand side here to Create. You're gonna click on Create, and this will open up the coding window. Now in this first lesson, what I'm gonna do is give you a full tour of Scratch, where everything is, how it all kind of works, um, and then in the next lesson, in the second lesson, you'll be able to start putting together some code and writing some simple programs. If you follow this tutorial series through, you'll end up writing some fairly complicated, quite interesting programs. And on the computerscience.click website, you'll also find there are other tutorials available there. For example, how to make your own Pac-Man game, how to make your own platform game, things like that, which should be good fun. And of course, once you've learned the basics of programming in Scratch, you can then learn other programming languages quite simply. In fact, there are other tutorials I'm doing on the BBC Microbits, which if you've ever used them, you'll know uses block coding that's very similar to the Scratch block coding we're going to look at now. And if you haven't looked at them before, that will be a good next step to consider. So let's have a look at the website then and see what we've got. The first thing uh, is this name at the top. Um, it says Untitled 15 for me. Um, it could say Untitled 1 for you if this is the first time you've used Scratch. It doesn't matter what it says in there, but change it. And this is really important because if you don't change the name, then you're going to end up with 30, 40, 50 programs, all of which say Untitled 1, Untitled 2, and you won't know which one's which. It doesn't matter what you call the program, but give it a name that will allow you to easily recognize what it is later on. So I'm going to change this to My First Program. There we go. So my first program, you can put in uh, the name you want in there as well. Um, and that will automatically start saving that program for you in your folder. And if you click on your name on the right hand side, you get a little drop down and you'll see a link that says my stuff. And the my stuff page is basically a list of all the programs you've done in Scratch while you were logged in. So the next thing to look at then is on the left hand side, we have this list of colored circles with names under them. Now these colored circles are the categories or groups or types of block or instruction that we can do. And if I click on these, you'll see that it scrolls up and down the list on the right hand side here. And these are all of the instructions that we can give the computer. And you'll see that these instructions are actually just blocks. Now, some programming languages, in fact, most programming languages require you to write the text yourself. You have to type out the uh, instructions using words. The two main programming languages you're going to come across which don't use that are Scratch and also the BBC Microbit page. 
And in both of those cases, you learn to program by dragging and connecting together blocks of code, so instructions that have been written for you, and you just snap them together into whatever order you want them to be. So that makes it a lot easier to learn to program. So you don't have to remember how to write out these instructions, how to spell particular words, uh, what symbols to put in or around certain instructions. You just simply put them together in the order that makes sense for you, for what you want to do. Now, if I scroll up and down uh, this list here, you'll see that the different blocks are different colors. And if you're trying to copy code from my tutorial or from somewhere else, a good way of knowing where to find that block is, of course, to look at the colors. So the first one we're probably going to be using is the event section, which is this pale yellow color. Um, and these blocks here um, are the ones that we'll probably use to begin most of our programs. The middle section here, this large area here, is where we're going to be putting together the program. That's where we build the program itself. Blank at the moment, but we'll start to put our code in there. And at the bottom, you'll see a backpack section. If I click on it, this will open up. And this is quite handy because if you've created blocks of code that are quite useful for doing particular uh, things in your games, and you want to perhaps reuse some of your blocks of code in other games, uh, for example, you've got some code that shows how you can allow a character to move around, uh, how to control a character moving up and down, left and right, you might save that block of code in your backpack and then you can simply click on these uh, saved blocks of code and they'll be added to the current program that you're putting together. So that's quite handy. Now on the right hand side here I have uh, what we call the stage area and this is basically the game. This is the game or the program. Nothing happening at the moment. We do have this little character, this little scratchy cat here um, and that is what we call a sprite. Now a sprite is any object in a game or program in Scratch. So it could be the character that the player is using, it could be an enemy character, it could be an object that the player is trying to uh, find or capture or avoid or it could be a wall or a platform to jump on any object in our game other than the background. Now talking of backgrounds uh, on the right hand side underneath this uh, game area we can see there is a, a backgrounds or backdrops area and we can click on this little folder here and choose a background for our game. So if I click on that we can either upload one or we can choose one of the backgrounds that's included in Scratch. Similarly, uh, with the sprites on the left hand side, we can add other characters or objects. So if I click on choose a sprite here, I can choose another character. Let's choose Abby. Um, and this now is a character in our game. Perhaps I don't need Scratch anymore. So I can click on the bin here to, that's cruel, isn't it? To put the cat in the bin. Yeah, that's not right, is it? Uh, forgive me, uh, but you know what I mean. It's just a sprite, it's not a real cat. Okay, so there we are. We now have our uh, character in our game there um, and we can add as many sprites as we want to our game. Now finally, at the top right here, you'll find that there is um, a series of three buttons and this simply changes the size of this game area or stage area just while you're previewing it and putting it together. <clears throat> So the first button uh, makes that a little bit smaller, which is handy because it now gives you a huge area for putting your code together. So that's really useful if you're concentrating on code, but if you want to play the game, want to test things out, then the middle button makes that stage area a bit larger like it was just now. Um, and that makes it a lot easier to see your game. <clears throat> to make it even easier, we've got this full screen button at the top right here, if I click that, you can see now we're looking at this full screen. We can see it in all its glory. Play the game um, or run the program. Click on the button here to go back to our main stage area. And let's now do the first little mini program. What we'll do is we'll make Abby say hello to us. So to do this, first of all, on the left hand side, I need to look down and find the events category. That's the one we're probably going to start with for most of our programs. The event is basically when something happens. So the computer is reacting to something. 
Um, in this case, it's going to react or do something when the green flag is clicked. Now, what's the green flag? Well, if we look at the um, area over here, you can see that there is a green flag and a red hexagon just at the top of this stage area. In fact, if we go full screen, you can see it's still there. And the green flag is what we click when we want the program to start running. So we can start running the program or the game when we click the green flag, and we can stop it if we want to by clicking the red hexagon. So this program is going to begin when the user clicks the green flag. Now you can see that block in the middle there, but it's a little bit small. So I'm going to zoom in on that by clicking the magnifying glass down here. If I click on that a few times, there we are. I can click anywhere in this white area to drag everything around. Uh, so I can see that a lot more clearly now. So there we are, we've got the when the green flag is clicked, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to get Abby to say hello. So what category is that in? Uh, you might have a little guess, perhaps, if you're not familiar with Scratch. Uh, you might think it's sound, but although I say we're going to get Abby to say hello, actually I mean that more as a speech bubble. So that is in looks. So if I go to looks, you can see that we have these little uh, say hello for two seconds, say hello, think something, and they're basically speech bubbles popping out of their heads. So let's grab this top one that says say hello for two seconds. And you can see that these are like jigsaw puzzles. They look like they would lock together. And if I click and drag this one, I move it up, you can see that there's a kind of a shadow that pops up there. And that is Scratch saying to you, oh, I think I know what you want to do here. You want to join these two blocks together, don't you? And if you do, you let go, and there we are, it's now snapped together. And if I grab the top one, I can drag that around and put that anywhere that I want. If I want to separate them, I can just click the bottom one and pull down, and that will then split them apart. Put that back together, and there we have our program. So say hello for two seconds, that is the program. And to run that program, remember I need to click the green flag. So I'm going to click that green flag and there we are. You can see that Abby is now saying hello for two seconds. Let's run that full screen. And again, we click the green flag and there she is saying hello for two seconds. Come back out of that and there we are. We have our program. Now you'll notice that at the top right, just above the uh, program area, is a little link that says save now. If I click on that one, that saves it to my online account. Because I'm logged in here, uh, that will save it to my online account. Don't forget to look at that. Uh, sometimes it does it automatically. But if you see a save now link and you've just added some code or made some changes to your game, it's a good idea to click that every now and then. Keep an eye on that. Now, what about if you want to get rid of code? Let's say I don't want her to say hello for two seconds. I want her to think something instead. So how do I get rid of code I don't want any longer? Well, the simplest thing to do if I just split these apart is to grab the code I don't want and put it back where it came from. In other words, drag it over to the left side here where I have this list of blocks of code. If I let go, it's gone and I can now drag a different block of code out. Let's have a think hum for two seconds. Let's go full screen so we can see that. And if we run the program now, you can see we get a little thinking bubble popping up then uh, for two seconds instead. So there we are. So remember, you've got to create an account and sign in to Scratch, first of all. You've got to name your program and give it a good name so you recognize it later on. Look down the categories on the left-hand side. So think about all those categories on the left, all those little uh, colored dots, and have a look through them. You can't break anything, so just have a look and see what's there. Uh, you might see some things and think, oh, that looks interesting, perhaps uh, maybe even experiment with it and try it out. Uh, try making the program that I've just done there, play around with it. Perhaps you want them to have a full conversation and say one thing and then another and then another and so forth. So play around with that perhaps as well. Run your program full screen, get rid of some blocks of code, run it again, change the background, change the sprite and don't forget to save every now and then. 
So that's as far as I'm going to go with this first lesson. So just have a little explore with it. And in the second lesson, we're going to start looking at input and output, understanding what those are and doing a little bit about that as well. If you're watching this video on the Tech Train channel on YouTube, then you should see somewhere, probably somewhere over here by my head, possibly in front of my face, I don't know, a link to the second video. If you're on the computer science.click website though, uh, you'll just see a list of lessons. So just follow through those lessons and I'll see you in the next video. So goodbye for now.